Without question, the human brain is the most complex and mesmerizing biological structure known to humankind. Our brains define who we are, how we function, and how we perceive the world. Brain development, for our purposes, begins with neural stem cells. These are also known as neural progenitor cells because they have the ability to form any of the various cell types involved in the central nervous system. Fast forwarding slightly, the next step is the formation of the neural tube from which the brain and spinal cord are developed. Next, the hindbrain, the midbrain, and the forebrain are formed. Incidentally, this is the order of evolutionary advancement from the most primitive and universal among the natural world to the newest and most complex. The hindbrain goes on to become the upper portion of the spinal cord, the brainstem, and the cerebellum. Collectively, the hindbrain is the control center for heart rate, breathing, and learned movements, including balance. The midbrain goes on to become the upper portion of the brainstem, and it is involved in some reflex actions, and also assists in voluntary movement, including that of the eyes. The forebrain later becomes the largest portion of the brain, and it is representative of the image most people think of when discussing the brain overall. It is the most highly developed of the three portions, being the center of intellectual and creative thought, sensory experience, and the warehouse for our accumulated knowledge and memories. The developed brain can be divided in several ways. It can be split into hemispheres, connected by the corpus callosum. It can also be divided into four different lobes, the occipital, parietal, temporal, and frontal. The occipital lobe is the vision center of the brain, responsible for translating the signals sent from the eyes through the optic nerve. The parietal lobe has a great deal to do with our sensory experience and our ability to coordinate movements in space. The temporal lobes are crucial for our ability to translate auditory cues from the outside world and to form memories. Finally, we come to the frontal lobe, which is involved in decision making, impulse control, and higher order thinking. Before this discussion can continue, we must know the structure of a neuron. Neurons are made up of cell bodies, or somata, dendrites, and axons. Axons are the long insulated ends that act like electrical wires to pass the signal on to other neurons. For simplicity, it would be good to imagine an electrical message, maybe the idea to play drums, which originates in the soma and then is transmitted via the axon and received by the dendrites of other neurons. The cerebral cortex is the outside layer of the brain, which is made up of gray matter. Gray matter consists mostly of the cell bodies of neurons, dendrites, and synapses. White matter lies encapsulated underneath the cerebral cortex. It is mostly made up of myelinated axons and aids in the successful and rapid transmission of information between neurons. An easy way to think of this would be to imagine the kind of mock telephone you may have made as a child, with two paper cups connected by a string between them. The cups represent two cell bodies, while the string between represents the myelinated axons. Now imagine billions of cups forming a spherical structure where all of the connecting strings are contained in the middle. You've got the basic idea. <laughs>